Call of Duty has existed for 22 years. That's right, nearly 22 years. October 2025 will mark the 22nd anniversary of the Call of Duty franchise. We have seen it go from World War One to World War II, modern warfare, and everything in between. And now, Black Ops 6 is on the horizon. This will be the 21st Call of Duty game that has ever been made. So this video is going to be a concise history of where Call of Duty began, where we are now, and quite honestly, if there's anything left for Call of Duty to explore at all. So as the title of the video implies, this is going to be a concise history of Call of Duty. It's important that we look at where Call of Duty came from before we jump straight into where it's going and what it has left to offer. However, there are a ton of Call of Duty games. So I'm not going to go through every single one in this video. I am not keen on spending the next two hours doing so. The first Call of Duty title aptly named Call of Duty released in the year 2003. Its setting was World War II and it released for the Microsoft Windows platform as well as Mac OS X. The developer at the time was Infinity Ward and Activision. Funnily enough, the original Call of Duty, despite being 21 years old, still sells for a whopping $20 on Steam. This marked the emergence of Call of Duty into the first-person shooter world. The game also featured three campaign storylines, one of which where you play an American by the name of Private Martin, as well as a British campaign via Sergeant Jack Evans, and a Soviet campaign that begins at the Battle of Stalingrad. The game also did really well for its time, receiving several Game of the Year awards as well as other critical acclamations in the industry. It won Computer Game of the Year and Computer First Person Action Game of the Year as well. IGN ended up giving the game a 9.3 out of 10. And within three years time, by 2006, the game had earned $29.6 million, making it the 13th best selling computer game since January of the year 2000. Now, analytics about the game aside, I do vaguely remember playing this, and as a gamer, looking back on it now, the simplicity of the game that Call of Duty was, and that every game really was, quite frankly, at that particular time, is really kind of funny to see. Laughable, not in a negative way, but just funny how we've come so far in the industry as far as technology, the advancement of gaming, and that the game was able to do so well for its time. It really was a time when being able to introduce something that pushed narrative and compelling story as well as gameplay or just something that people hadn't seen a lot of before done in a unique original way really went much further than it seems to today. Now jumping ahead just a little bit I want to touch on what I think the first real true big multiplayer shooter at least in the Call of Duty universe was and that is the emergence of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The original, the OG Modern Warfare. It released in 2007 again developed by Infinity Ward and published by Activision. Now this is a game that if you know Call of Duty, you know the franchise of Call of Duty, you are a player of Call of Duty, you played Call of Duty Modern Warfare, that was the game that made Call of Duty for you. The World War I, World War II settings were all well and good, you know, truth be told at this particular point in my life I barely remember playing those games, but Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I don't think there's a single person who played the franchise who doesn't remember the campaign mission all gillied up. I mean, what an incredible mission. What a classic Call of Duty mission, gaming mission for that matter. I mean, it was iconic, iconic. Crawling through the grass between the soldiers, laying down still so they didn't see you, taking out the helicopter, one shot, one kill, sliding across the ground right toward you. I mean, it was an iconic mission, legendary, well known by anyone who knows the Call of Duty Modern Warfare franchise or Call of Duty franchise in general. Of course, this iteration of the game won numerous awards as well. It was a top-selling game worldwide the year that it released. 
It sold 7 million copies in one year and truly became that modern fix for a warfare game that at least me and my generation, I think, really clung to. Truly the first big multiplayer Call of Duty. Maybe the first big, uh, I guess you could say mass, maybe like a commercialized multiplayer game in general. Uh, this was back when, too, uh, you only had three kill streaks in the game. Uh, there was a UAV, there was an airstrike, and an attack helicopter. So it was super simple. You didn't have all this extra stuff, and then, you know, now you've got like 25 kills, 30 kills without dying, and you get a nuke, plus 17 other, you know, uh, uh, kill streaks. You had a UAV, an airstrike, and an attack helicopter. Three, five, and seven kills. That's what you got. That's what came in. Um, it, it was just, it was simple. It was, it was a good game for its time. It was simple. It was really the introduction to that to that modern shooter experience and then of course we moved right into modern warfare 2 i'm not going to give an analytical breakdown of that game obviously it did really well was critically acclaimed for its time in my opinion and i feel like a lot of other people's opinions who followed the call of duty franchise who who sort of came up with that uh, emergence of the modern era of call of duty modern warfare 2 was and probably still is regarded as the best modern warfare or call Call of Duty game, rather, that was ever created. That's my opinion. Uh, I'm not even really sure what made it so good. I think it was just the first time that we had what that game provided. It just was what it was at the time, which was the biggest war game to be playing. It presented you with everything that every other game wasn't presenting. Obviously, looking back on it now, it was probably riddled with problems and would be infuriating, or would have been infuriating, uh, much like a lot of the games that we play currently are, but Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 really changed the game when it came to modern shooters. That was probably right around the time when even myself, you know, game battles was still uh, still big. It might have just been emerging around that time, but game battles became so huge when Modern Warfare 2 dropped. Modern Warfare 2 really was a blast. I don't remember it enough to be pissed off about everything that was wrong with it. I know Harriers and Pavlos, as well as Chopper Gunners, though, were probably the most annoying pain in the ass thing about the game. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is what got me into a damn midnight release at GameStop competing in a local and regional tournament for the game. The only game competition I've ever competed in uh, publicly was because of this game. Again, my opinion, I think a lot of other people's opinion as well, Modern Warfare 2 really was the pinnacle of the Call of Duty experience. Now, we fast forward to where things start to take just a little bit different approaches. So now again, we're gonna be talking a little bit about what kind of transitioned, where things sort of, you know, fell off or took a turn that people didn't really respond to. Now, Modern Warfare 2, we just spoke about, that was probably one of the most highly regarded games in the Call of Duty franchise. But what were some of the worst received Call of Duty games and why? Well, to just go ahead and start right where we are, Modern Warfare 3, uh, I mean, it was basically Modern Warfare 2, uh, just under a different name. The campaign was, uh, uh, royally uh, mostly a letdown completely unoriginal not very immersive um i guess the zombie experience which i didn't play was pretty poor people didn't like that very well at all but largely it seemed like modern warfare 3 was just the modern warfare 2 remastered that everyone wanted but nobody got and moving on from that you've got call of duty ghosts cold war vanguard and advanced warfare black ops 3 and 4 now those three games in particular are where we started to get the exoskeleton suits and the wall running and the jetpacking and the jumping and the sliding and the, you know, Superman crush Hulk smash into the ground. So I kind of get why people didn't really receive those very well. Call of Duty is in a unique position now, and I guess it kind of always has been after it blew up after the emergence of the original Modern Warfare, which is that they're trying to please too many people at one time. The IP has become so broad far and wide that they're trying to please too many people at one time. The hardcore gamers want it to be a gr 
gritty, hardcore, tactical, tight-knit military shooter with modern technology, weapons, and tactics. The Fortnite kids want it to be something kind of like it is now in Warzone, where you have kitty cat skins and llama skins, and you're, you shoot people and they turn into balloons when they die, and you have little jetpacks on, and you're just buzzing around the map. So Call of Duty took a weird turn, and I've talked about this before in other videos, where it almost seems like maybe it didn't lose its identity, but it's just trying to do so many things across all of its IPs that it doesn't seem like it really has a definitive identity anymore. Now, me personally, I didn't really have that big of a problem with Black Ops 3 and 4. I didn't play much of Advanced Warfare. I thought Cold War was a giant snooze fest. So was Vanguard. Ghosts was okay. You know, at least they tried to innovate a little bit, do some new things. But at the very least with Black Ops 3, we got Blackout, which I wish was still a thing. I would very much appreciate Infinity Ward keeping their universe separate. Treyarchs, fortunately, doesn't seem like that's going to happen. They've already integrated it over. That's another topic. But that type of game, and we see it year in and year out as every, you know, so two or three game cycles go by, you just get kind of like this wild, erratic iteration of Call of Duty. I remember back in, I don't know, maybe it was Modern Warfare 3, the remake, the, or maybe it was the original Modern Warfare. But, you know, the big thing was boots on the ground, boots on the ground. We're going boots on the ground. You know, just one of the most basic, fundamental principles of a war shooter, a warfare game, having to keep your soldier based on the earth while they fight as an infantry combat soldier was the selling point because Call of Duty had gone so far to the left or to the right, however you want to look at it, having people diving all over the map, floating around in the air, running up and down walls, jumping, it, just all kinds of madness. So again, not a comprehensive list. It's some of my opinion. It's some of what's been reviewed and has been sort of widely agreed upon in the industry. Ghosts, Cold War, Vanguard, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3 and 4 were some of the most sort of shaky iterations of the series. Moving on to my next point, I wanted to touch on something briefly about what games provided sort of any real competition for Call of Duty or, or what game even now, you know, stands to be Call of Duty's kind of biggest competitor. I, I think you can name a lot of them, uh, but I think there's probably one, maybe two or three that really stood out and that still do. Uh, first and foremost, I, I think it's got to be Battlefield. You know, Battlefield 1942 released a year earlier than, a, than the original Call of Duty. Same systems, you know, Windows and Mac. And it, it introduced just a little bit more diversity in game play with the ability to use vehicles and not only just be stuck in you know the body of an infantry soldier but to kind of had more have more of a, a widespread experience of, of, of what it was to be in war all-out warfare and that's one thing that battlefield and call of duty have you know in being the two sort of primary shooters to play have always kind of clashed on where call of duty maintained its arcade you know sort of very linear three paths you know one up the left, one up the middle, one up the right. You know, very straightforward, fast-paced style of gameplay. And then Battlefield introduced this wide open, sort of unlimited possibilities, destructible environments, vehicles, all sorts of different ways to engage in the combat you are a part of. This was one of the key players in the gaming space that provided any real competition to Call of Duty, and, and probably still does. Another couple notable mentions, at least back in the day in games that I was a huge fan of, was the Ghost Recon series, as well as SOCOM. They're not really prominent or relevant anymore, especially SOCOM, since those games haven't been made. The Ghost Recon series has, but it's largely been received poorly. But Ghost Recon and SOCOM back in the day were bangers. I mean, absolute bangers. Spent hours and hours and hours playing those games. Now, Battlefield, unfortunately, has fallen off. I think that the next iteration of Battlefield is going to really be a, a true sort of, you know, nose to the grindstone kind of uh, proof in the pudding moment for these guys because if they don't come correct with this next iteration, I think we're going to have other games take over. I mean, Delta Force is here. It's basically a Battlefield clone, you know, and it's got an extraction mode. So we'll see. I mean, you know, how far can you take a series? 
How far can you take a series? And that's what this video is ultimately about. Now, largely, ladies and gentlemen, this is a rhetorical question because the truth is, is that I'm just a creator on YouTube who's highly opinionated. I don't know where we go from here. I really don't. But I do know why that I am no longer interested in Call of Duty or games like Call of Duty, uh, including Black Ops 6. Yes, I will pl probably play a little bit of the new Warzone, uh, you know, see what it feels like, see how it is. I have friends that play it, and, and that's really the only reason I play Call of Duty anymore even now is just because I have friends that play it. But I don't, I just, I'm not interested in Call of Duty anymore and I don't really know why. I don't know if it's because I don't have an answer for where the series goes and what brings it back to me and my interests and maybe that's part of the problem is that it's not about me and my interests anymore. I'm older now. I'm not involved in the mindless repetition of spawning in and dying and spawning in and dying like I used to be. So it could be burnout. It could be dis satisfaction with the gameplay loop. But again, largely it's a rhetorical question because there's no argument that Call of Duty is the best-selling shooter of all time and it very well may remain that way. But largely I don't think Call of Duty aims to benefit people of my age group or demographic anymore and I think that's apparent and abundant in the way that the game is handled and the way that the microtransaction live service economy of the game works and quite clearly the age group and demographic that it seems to cater to within in that marketplace. So that might just be what Call of Duty is now. Will Call of Duty ever become, again, outside of the campaign, a slower, sort of hardcore, grittier, tactical, strategy-based shooter? Realistically, probably not. The Call of Duty campaigns have offered that in some degree over the years, but the multiplayer experience and certainly the Warzone experience has never been that and probably never will be. Watching the streamers and competitions that play this game avidly every day, I mean, one of the biggest appeals of this is that it's such a fast-paced game where everything happens in an instant and you don't really have time to blink so I just don't see it happening for this genre and that is one of many contributing factors for me as far as why I just don't enjoy it anymore skill issue sure maybe the hand-eye coordination just isn't quick enough to keep up with it anymore a myriad of things undoubtedly but I want to know your opinion on the series you know where you came into this series at if you grew up with this series what you think the series needs to bring it back to earth or if you don't think anything is wrong with the series at all. What is your opinion of it? Do you think that Battlefield can remain a competitor? Can they bring something back to the table that stands the test of time? Can they evolve? I think that's really what it comes down to is evolution. Um, even though we may not know exactly what that evolution is or looks like. But we do have new games that are coming, so something has to happen, right? We have Arena Breakout. We have Delta Force. We have Escape from Tarkov still running strong. We have Frag Punk coming. We have Spectre Divide. We have Valorant, counter -Strike. There are a lot of things, and Counter-Strike could be a testament about how little a game has to evolve to still be successful. But Counter-Strike, I would say, has always stayed true to one secular identity and one secular mode of gaming. That's why I think it's been as successful as it has been for as long as it has been, where as Call of Duty doesn't seem to be able to really do that at all. I could go on and on about this topic for hours and hours and hours. I thank you guys very much for sticking to to the end if you did. These are just my thoughts, my opinions, something I felt like I wanted to do with the release of Black Ops 6 and just thinking about games in general, being a first person streamer by heart, but who's been looking for something a little bit differently recently. Um, you know, I'm happy with a lot of the shooters that are coming out, but I'm starting to want to play different games and, you know, have uh, deeper experiences. And some of these shooters, you know, they just don't provide enough depth for me anymore. They don't provide enough depth. Uh, I like them. I like playing them. I just don't think I have the long longevity to play them quite as much as I used to, especially games like Call of Duty. It, it's just not for me. So again, please let me know what you think. Uh, let me know how you feel about it. Let me know what you're playing. If you left COD, if you're still a diehard fan of COD, if you made it to the end and you enjoyed the content, uh, throw a like
bike on it. It's totally free and it helps a ton if you would like to engage more in the community we're trying to build here whether that be through the live streams or through the videos we post, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitch. There are links in the description of the video as well as on the about section of the page itself. We stream three days a week. We're growing here. We're growing on Twitch. We're looking uh, for people to, you know, have a good time with to talk about these kind of things as well as anything else that may be going on in your world and in your life. So again, thank you guys very much for listening to my ramble, for listening to my rant and to my rave. I'll see you guys online.